Welcome to a Friday edition of One's World. I'm not sure how many uh, times I'm going to be able to keep this up in the coming months because my writing is really swamping me. But right now I've got some time off and uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about YouTube videos <laughs> and uh, it comments on YouTube videos because I had an interesting interchange the past couple of days. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I, I don't watch a lot of YouTube videos, but I do pause in my writing from time to time and uh, want to just take a little break and I'll, I'll pull up YouTube and its algorithm will give me some suggestions <laughs> and uh, uh, sometimes I'll take them and sometimes I'll search for something else that I rather more interested in and I would say for 90% uh, of the time I watch some kind of clip from a movie that I know so like I don't know uh, Sleepless in Seattle let's say you know I'll I'll watch the last three or four minutes of, of um, uh, Meg Ryan and uh, and Tom Hanks meeting at the top of the <laughs> Empire State Building and then go back to my writing. But, but I have in the past been interested in a couple of what you would call controversies. Um, the two most important being um, uh, creationism, that is a general evangelical belief that the world was spoken into existence in six days by God versus um, largely atheists um, and um, the belief in that the earth is, a, is flat um, and uh, opposed by people who, who think it's um, an oblate steroid. So sometimes I'll pick them up too, and that's what I want to talk about today. So let's get into it. You know that um, the, the algorithm that, that um, YouTube uses is trying to pull up things that it thinks that you will want to see with one little proviso. It also wants to show you the ones that it makes money on. That is, they're monetized so that the people who make the videos will make some money, but YouTube also pulls out a percentage for itself. And so if a, if a channel is monetized, then it gets priority by um, in the algorithm when it's, it's uh, suggesting things for you. All right, I'm, I'm okay with that. My channel is not monetized. Uh, YouTube doesn't make any money out of me. I don't make any money out of them. And in consequence, I don't get very many viewers because I'm very low down the totem pole when the, when the algorithm kicks in. Um, so, you know, I'm aware of that. And um, so I was, I was watching uh, a, a video by um, a fairly well-known atheist about something or other. I don't even remember what it was about at this point. Um, uh, <laughs> it's not really important. What is important is that I decided for some strange reason to leave a comment and I very rarely leave comments. Um, 
you know, there's one channel that I left a comment on, I don't watch it anymore, it's a guy who um, is a former Jehovah's Witness who rails against a lot of things including uh, all kinds of Christianity and so forth and he always has his microphone up here and he talks into the microphone, it's a very big clumsy black thing on a big lead you know. and and I, I commented and he never replied, I said look pull the microphone away from your face so that we can see you, your face, see what you look like you know, like, I don't know, what, like, a lot of these podcasters and YouTubers have these giant microphones, um, and they're not necessary. You know, Stephen Colbert or Jimmy Kimmel don't have giant microphones when they go on stage to give their monologues. They have tiny little level ears, like I'm using. I mean, maybe the sound quality's not great, and <laughs> I don't have any comments turned on so you can't tell me whether it is or not but it seems okay to me so I, I, I you know once in a while I'll comment and this time I just I don't know I was feeling I was feeling antsy or something and I, I wrote a comment and I said look I don't disagree with you but it doesn't seem to me to be very useful to be just touting the ideas of other people and making money off it. So I got a firestorm back. Oh, what do you got against making money? Uh, and I, was, I wasn't really quite prepared for it, but it was okay. And and they seem to think. I mean, like the the, the immediate thought was like this guy is a sort of celebrated secular atheist. And I'm criticizing him, so I must be some kind of anti-atheist. Well, yeah, I, I, so I said, look, I'm, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a professor. Uh, I've, been, I've been a professor for over 40 years. And one guy walked back and said, I'm guessing it's at a Christian university. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> but for 35 years, I was... I was a professor at a state university, as bad as, as secular as you can get. Um, I mean, I didn't say that I'm an ordained Presbyterian minister because that wouldn't help a lot. Especially wouldn't help a lot because it, it's not an indication of anything to do with what I believe. Um, I mean, I think I'm closer to being an actual atheist than a lot of people who claim to be atheists. Um, but I do believe in some kind of super... You know, not supernatural, supreme consciousness in the universe, um, which I'm not willing to talk about right now. But anyway, you know, this just bombarded me over and over. You know, you 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 must hate this guy and so, and and I th I thought like, okay, calm down, guys. Like, first of all, if you read read my first comment again. You know, like it says, among other things, I do not disagree with you. Right? So how do you get Christian out of that? You know, he's an atheist and I don't disagree with him, so I must be a Christian. No, they didn't read that part. That's a very common mistake that a lot of people make of not reading, or not reading what is actually rare as there as opposed to what you think is there. I mean, I think that it's perfectly possible to, to read I do not disagree with you as I disagree with you. You know, just blot the not out somehow or other. So I wrote it again in, in big caps, you know, I do not disagree with you. And uh, finally today, <laughs> this guy said, uh, yo, you're just being a contrarian. Well, first of all, I don't think he knows what a contrarian is. Um, but, oh, well, I say he, I mean, I don't know if it's he or she. Um, this person just doesn't get it. You know, so eventually what I, what I wrote to the crowd was like, stop this. What you're doing is you're setting up sides and then fighting against the side you disagree with. You know, so, for example, um, Let's take flat earthers. They're 
pretty strange bunch. I, they believe the Earth is a flat disk um, covered in a dome and the dome keeps the air in. I don't know what it keeps it in from or what, I mean because they don't have a clear sense of what's beyond the dome. Um, and that the disk is surrounded by a great ice wall um, that's Antarctica and that's what keeps the, the, the ocean water in. They don't explain why the water would, would flow out uh, if the wall wasn't there because they don't believe in gravity um, but they believe that um, and they're not they're not open to um, suggestions as to other possibilities because they're fixed on that idea with what we would call a, a worldview you know literally if in German it's Weltanschauung Right, which <laughs> just translates as Welt, you know, world, Anschauung, <laughs> perspective. You know, they've got that perspective. Well, why do they have that perspective? Um, well, one of the reasons is that it, it, uh, it conforms to what the Bible says. Because the Bible says um, on day one, God spoke into existence um, uh, light, and interestingly, uh, on that first day, he didn't just create light. He ha be there was darkness, and that darkness had been there all along. And he created light, and then he had to separate the two. Now that's a really interesting perspective, because that means that the darkness is one thing, and the light is another thing. And if you mix them together, well, things are just horrible. You get a grey, stodgy mess. So you have, to, you have to put the darkness on one side and the light on the other side. And then alternate them so that you get the light for half the day, or half the, the turn, <laughs> and darkness for half the turn. And that's how you create time. You know, like light alternating with darkness. The darkness is a thing, it's a real thing. You know, in, in modern science we would just say that darkness is the absence of light. Which is why, why if, you, if you light a single candle you, you, uh, you do better than cursing the darkness. So, you've, you know, but then on the second day, God created a dome. And he separated the waters, the primeval waters, from waters below, that is under the dome, you know, and waters above the dome. And we know that there are waters above the dome because water is blue, and you see it in the oceans, and so you've got water in the ocean, and you've got water above the dome, and it's what makes the dome blue. You've got water above there. <laughs> I mean, we can go into all kinds of reasons why that, that is not a very good explanation of things. But that's what the Bible says. Um, and then on the third day, he separated the waters below into, into dry land and um, oceans. And that's how, that's how you create the, um, the, the environment that we live in. Well, if you, t if you treat the Bible as being inerrant in that respect, um, and that's a, that is a, 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 an evangelical theology, you know, the, the, the Bible it, it does not contain errors. So if it doesn't contain errors, then there's got to be a dome. And there's got to be waters above the dome. And those waters, if you're not careful, can flood the earth to the point where it's completely flooded so that you have to build an ark and put all the living things in it to, to survive the flood and so on. And people, there are a lot of people who will argue in favor of that. And why do they do it? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. But then there are other people, you know, who believe that the earth is an oblate spheroid and that 
I don't know exactly what the dating is right now, but it's in the billions of years, and, and the whole universe is supposedly 13.8 billion years old, but it may be older, it depends on the most recent telescopic uh, discoveries that are just now pushing the boundaries back a little bit. And there's a science of planet formation and um, um, concepts about um, continental drift and, and, and how much water actually exists on the earth and how long it's been here and so forth. And these, these conceptions compete and you've got to make a choice. Um, and the thing is that once you've made a choice, it becomes remarkably difficult to undo that choice, even if evidence works against you. So, for example, there's a famous case of a flat earther who's now dead. I, th I believe you pronounce his last name Knodel, K-N-O-D-E-L, first name Bob. And he was famous as a flat earther. I mean, he 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 would go on lecture tours and didn't believe the International Space Station existed and, could, and explained why and all this kind of stuff. And he thought, okay, I'm going to get proof. I'm going to get a ring gyroscope. Now, a ring gyroscope is used by um, airlines and planes to um, make sure they, that they can keep the uh, orientation of the plane relative to the Earth um, stable. Um, and they have to they have to calculate the angular momentum um, of uh, objects. So they, they cost a lot of money. I think this his his cost twenty thousand dollars. So he plunks down the twenty thousand dollars in order to get this ring gyroscope, put it on a table, set it in motion. And if the Earth is not moving, then the ring gyroscope will show no angular mo momentum. And if the Earth is spinning, not just moving, but spinning, then it will calculate the angular momentum. What happened? Sets it in motion, and it records 15 degrees drift per hour, <laughs> which is exactly how much angular momentum the Earth would have if it was spinning on its axis 360 degrees every 24 hours. Now, you do the math, divide 360 by 24, come up with 15. So, what do you think? Did, <laughs> did he say, oh, uh, I'm wrong, um, uh, the ring gyroscope has shown that the Earth is spinning at 15 degrees per hour. No, no, he said, oh, that's not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> I'll have to find another way to get the gyroscope to read what I want. Like maybe there are cosmic rays that are penetrating it and, and giving a false reading. And so he did all kinds of things to shield it and protect it and move it to different places. And it just recorded 15 degrees per hour wherever he was and whatever he did. And, he, and I, I'm pretty sure he died believing that he was right and the gyroscope was wrong. That's the power of worldviews. So what I ended up writing to these people who were railing on me about you know, about being a dissenter was to say, look, why don't you do this? Why don't you start asking why these people believe what they believe, which is not what you believe. Like you are convinced, for example, you are convinced in the scientific method and they are not. Why do you think they aren't? Like, like the first answer that comes to everybody's mind is, well, they're stupid. Or, more <laughs> softer, um, uh, they're not educated. They, they don't 
they're, they're not trained in science properly. Okay, but you're not trained in theology properly either. You know, so I, which course is the, is the better course? Isn't it better to just ask questions rather than start fighting? And that was because that was my original point. I mean, why are you making money by fighting other people? What what benefit is that to anybody? Why don't you why don't you ask what is a what is the deeper rationale that this person is cleaving to because they they don't want to give it up? What benefit is it to them? And wouldn't it be better if we all try to understand one another <laughs> as opposed to just fighting them, as opposed to just saying, look, I'm right, you're wrong. I'm going to spend the rest of my life and make a lot of money in the bargain proving you wrong. You know, ultimately, you'll die or you'll come over to my side. Well, both sides can do that. That's, that's, that, that's a never-ending story that's never going to stop. So, isn't it better as I, who's the politician, don't know who it was, Gandhi maybe, who said it's better to build bridges than build walls. Well, these people are just building walls. And I'm not a big wall builder. You know, I, I like bridges. <laughs> They're pretty good. So that's my theme for the day. My theme is like, why can't we build understanding and trust rather than negativity and fighting and oppression? That's my question of the day. <laughs> so I don't know if I'll be back uh, on Tuesday. I might be, but I've got a lot of work to do, so who knows. So as always, if you like my videos, please subscribe, please like, please tell your friends, and have a wonderful weekend.